In this video, what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to wire a motor for 480 volts. Now, 480 volts can also be called high voltage. If you look on the side of a motor, very commonly there will be a high and a low voltage. Um, one will be 480 and typically the other one will be like a 230 or something like that. Make sure you're looking at your name plates so that way you can figure out which one is which um, because it's not a given that they're, not all motors are 480 volts or 230, okay? The ones that we're going to be using in the class are, all right? Now what I want to do in this video is I'm going to show you guys the schematics that are commonly used on the side of motors for the high voltage. These are both high voltage diagrams. Right next to these was the low voltage diagram but I'm gonna teach that in an upcoming video before we actually wire those ones, okay? So I'm gonna teach you guys about the diagrams and then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually wire up uh, one of our motors. Now, at that point, I'm gonna show you guys uh, wire nuts, how to properly put on wire nuts, and then I'm gonna talk about attaching that ground, things like that. It's really a pretty easy process, but it's probably one of the most confused things out there. What I wanna do is we're gonna start with this one here to my left, this diagram, is probably the most common diagram that you're gonna see on the side of motors for, um, I would say not the most common diagram, the most common style of diagram. You're gonna see a lot of these circles that are connected with lines, and then having lines that go off the side of the diagram. You, you may see these where they have, the lines are done differently. You might see where three of these are connected, and then two are connected, and then have a line coming off of them. Um, once you guys learn how these work, it doesn't matter what the diagram looks like, all you're doing is going through and connecting wires. Because what, what happens is these are like connection points. Let's think about like connection points. Or they are wires. Sometimes this number four would actually correlate to a wire that's on a pigtail that's coming off that motor, okay? Sometimes it is a, um, an actual lug that you can screw a ring connector down into, but most of the time they're just wires coming out of the side. Just like the one that we'll be working with here in a second. Now, so these are terminals, like I said. So they are connected to the windings that are inside the motor. So depending on whether you're doing a Y or a delta, you're you are connecting those, those uh, windings either in series or parallel, right? So all we're doing is we're connecting them in, on the, in that little box to be Y or delta, okay? Now, like I said, they're really easy to understand because you don't really have to understand how the motor works. You just have to know how to wire it. So if I had a, see these ones down here in the bottom that just have a line that trails off? This would be your line voltage. This would be where your, you know, your, that T1 right here, you'd have your T2 and you'd have your T3 come in to our electrical panel or that electrical box on the side of your motor, okay? So these are incoming power. If they're not connected to anything that they just trail off, those are your incoming power. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about that even on our next one. Now, you can see like four and seven have a wire that's going, or a line that's going in between these. That is either going to be a wire nut where there's two wires coming off and you're just gonna connect them, or sometimes if there are the lugs, you're actually gonna put a piece of wire in between, or you're gonna put a piece of metal, depending on the style of motor that you're working with. I've seen a variety of, a variety of these where there's just a piece of metal that slips in and you screw them down or something like that, okay? Again, this is not the only schematic you're going to see on the side of the motor. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep trying to try to explain that. These are not the way they will be set up. You, like I said, you might come up to one and these four, these three are connected and these three are connected and then have your line voltage come off. Um, if you look on below this video, there's actually a, a picture of about four or five different styles of diagrams that are based around this one right here, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, like I said, you're going to see a lot of these, but really you're just connecting when it says there's a line in between them. You're connecting five and eight are connected. Six and nine are connected. Three is connected to a line voltage coming in. All right. These are really not that complicated. All right. So let's talk about the ones that we're going to be using. The ones we are going to be using are a little bit more complicated looking only because they put more information on the, uh, the side or on the nameplate. And this is a, an exact ish um, translation, okay? And all they've done is they've gone through and they put blue T1, blue T2, orange, oops, got an E there, orange T3, and yellow T4, brown T7, black T5. These are just, these are just the wires that are coming out of our motor, okay? 
that's really no different but than the one we have over here, except they just probably put the, the wire numbers. Like this one will probably just have a wire number six, or depending on the nameplate you get, it might have the wire number written as a T or something like that too, okay? So looking at this wiring diagram, we can see that we have our line voltage coming in. Line one is coming into our blue, line two is coming into our white, and line three is coming into our orange. We are literally going to bring in those three wires and we are going to connect them with wire nuts right there. Then we're gonna take the rest of the wires, everything down, and we can see that they are connecting to each other. So you can see the yellow T4 is connecting to brown T7 and it's connecting right here. Again, we're just taking those two wires we're putting a wire nut on them, okay? Now this INS, um, these, this is just pretty much saying that these are connected. You're connecting them right there. There's nothing coming off of this at this point on our wires. There are on our motors. There could be stuff coming off on other ones, but this one, it is set up just like this where you're connecting yellow and black, you're connecting black and red, and you're connecting gray and the yellow slash black, okay? You're and literally, there's gonna be two wires and you're just gonna connect them with a wire nut, okay? So like I said, this is, you're gonna see stuff like this one too. Um, little bit more screwy, but it's, and it takes a couple more seconds to just kind of look through it, but don't, don't, get, uh, don't get nervous or don't get scared of them because they're really not that bad. It's, and it's really the same thing as over here. It just looks different. I mean, you can, you can literally look back over here and you can see T4 and T7. On ours, are T4 and T7 are connected just like that, okay? You can see that T5 and T8, T5, T8, you can see that our line voltage is coming into number one. Blue T1 has got our line voltage on it, okay? It's the same thing, it's just a different way of drawing it. So, what I wanna do is, first of all, I wanna point out that there is no ground in these diagrams. The ground is kinda of one of those things that they just kinda of don't talk about. Usually, there is a ground lug inside of every motor where you're gonna actually take that green ground wire and you're just gonna hook it up, okay? Usually there's a ring connector you're gonna need to crimp on um, or something like that. I pretty much have only seen the ring connectors is the only way I've seen them put on. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a clamp inside of there sometimes that you could clamp them on with, but ring connector is what I've seen most of the time. Every one of these motors does have a ground. Don't believe just because it's not on the diagram that there is no ground because there is one. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take you and we're gonna actually gonna wire up this motor and I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and we're gonna kinda of talk about some of the little um, information that you're gonna need as you go along. Okay, so now that we're at the motor, the first thing I wanna point out is the lug back in here and I'm gonna shine my light. I don't know if you can see the screw here in the back. There is a ground symbol right next to it that you could use to kinda of indicate that that is the ground right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up first so that way we get that out of the way and everything should be a little bit easier after that. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I've got my ring connector right here. I'm gonna take my green ground wire. I'm just gonna go ahead and slip it on. I have went ahead and stripped all of my wires to about roughly half an inch. So that way that they will work perfectly for the, the um, terminal connectors that we're gonna be using, okay? So I got my connector on here. This one I believe is a heat shrink one, so I would typically heat shrink it. But because we're uh, pressed for time and on video, I'm going to leave it the way it is. We're gonna go ahead and pull it out pull out our uh, screw here. Be careful you don't drop the screw. Perfect. You know, string it back through. Oops. in that okay so not always are you going to be able to uh, have the wire kind of tucked in there so tightly and just go directly up sometimes it'll have to be looped out and go up okay um, you just don't have the ability to shove it back up like I do in this this case okay so let's go ahead and let's move on to actually wiring up our our motor leads so the first one we're gonna have is we just have our three line voltage coming out of here 
The first thing I want to point out is the style of end connectors I use. These are just the yellow connectors are the ones that I use. I typically find that yellow is the most common. It fits most of the sizes. Obviously, if you're moving up in sizes, you're going to need to have a bigger uh, terminal connector. Or um, if you're doing multiple wires, you need to have more or a bigger terminal connector. Or if you're doing smaller ones, you need to have a smaller wire connector in that, in that case. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my, uh, we're going to take our black one. We're going to start with black and I'm gonna hook it up to my blue wire. So I'm gonna grab my blue wire right here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this one a little bit shorter so that they match, because I don't like that look. I want to make sure that when I put these guys on, the um, there's gonna be no showing wire, okay? So I'm gonna put these close to each other, and I'm just gonna get my screw. And I'm gonna put these things on pretty tight. I would say fairly tight. I'm going to, almost as much as I can do. I'm even twisting the wires a little bit in there, okay? So now I know that that one's on there. I'm then gonna take my electrical tape, I'm take my black electrical tape, doesn't matter what color you have. I think we only stock the black though, so. I'm going to put a little bit around on the wire. This is a personal preference for me right here is I go around on the wire and then I go up onto our wire nut. I try to make it so that um, the opening at the bottom is completely covered, okay? So it's what I try to do, is get it so it's kind of safe in there, that way nothing can get poked in there, okay? Now this wire is done, okay? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take it, and usually what I do is I kind of shove all the other wires around it and tuck it off to the side. You could at this point um, maybe tuck it around something, I don't know, but get it out of your way, okay? So then we're gonna go to line number, uh, or white, the white line coming in number two, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it up to the white wire because it doesn't matter. Again, this one's a little bit longer than I would like. This is the first time this motor's ever been wired up, so. Go ahead, we're gonna cut it short. Make sure they match. Again, I'm just gonna tighten these on there, okay? Now it's just a process of going through all of the wires and going and uh, making sure that they're hooked up correctly, okay? So. Let's just go ahead and we'll, I'll go through the process with you guys once. You should be good to go. And like I said, the, the electrical tape is really to make sure that those wire nuts do not accidentally get knocked off. Um, you're gonna see when we go to put these things back inside of our, um, oops, what am I doing? Oh, orange, see? You gotta always pay attention. Go back to your schematic and pay attention here. So we got red. A red line coming in to our orange connect orange wire. Very easy to accidentally hook it up red to red, I guess, huh? <laughs> oh, I got that a little bit farther down than I would have liked. All right, so now I've got my three incoming line voltages. They're done right here. We can push them off to the side if you'd like. And now all we gotta do is go through and connect up our, uh, our internal windings right here. So what we're gonna do is the first one is going to be yellow to brown. So we're gonna grab our yellow here. We're gonna grab our brown right here. And all I do is get them pretty close together. We're gonna just screw them on. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up all of these at once and then we'll go through with the electrical tape to speed things up a little bit. Nice and tight. Then we got red to gray. Ooh, I just happened to be holding them. That's kind of lucky. And then lastly, I have our our yellow black, you can kind of see that one's yellow and black depending on which way you turn it. And I got our, our, um, our, oops, looks like I made a mistake here. Oh, okay. So looks like on the second one, it should have been black to red. So good thing I double check that, huh? And all that, all that happened is when I got to the end, the wires didn't match up. So make sure you're paying close attention guys. So red to black, and then we have 
or yellow, black, to gray. Okay, we're just gonna go through, do all of these with the electrical tape. You will be required to use electrical tape in all the labs here. It will be a, uh, it's one of our safety things that we do, okay? Some places you work may say not to. It just kind of depends on where you go, I guess. I think it's, I think it's well worth doing. Okay, so all of our wires are connected up. Now we need to get it inside of our electrical panel here. Um, some of it you can shove back out of the top, but not very much. We're gonna go ahead and I would just take them and I kind of twist them in here. Okay. Uh, hence the reason we use the tape, because now you're pushing and shoving on these wires, right? So, we've got it like this. Go ahead and put our nameplate back on, or our plate cover, I should say. Make sure that when you put this plate on that you're not uh, you're not pinching any wires. All right. So now we're gonna get do is just tighten these guys on. All right, and you're done. This is not, now before we uh, finish conclude here. This would not look like this with the wire coming out. I'm just trying to show you guys how to wire in the motor. Um, make sure you're always putting those covers on. Make sure that your wire nuts are always tight. Always put electrical tape on them. Um, and make sure you have the right size um, wire connectors, okay? So go ahead and move on. I think in the next lab we are gonna get to wire up one of these motors. Um, like I said, this video was just for wiring 480. Um, moving forward, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a video on wiring up the 240 and we're gonna go over those wiring schematics too, okay? So move on, good luck.